What is going on, everybody? It's a corner team coming at you with another movie review on the new movie. So, how are you guys doing? I'm doing myself. So, today we're doing another movie review on a movie that just came out just recently, following the week of Logan. And that movie is Kong Skull Island. If you don't know what Kong Skull Island is, then you probably haven't watched the, the um, 2006 King Kong movie, nor have you ever even seen a King Kong movie in general back in when, like, Godzilla times, where, like, there was really cheap knockoff looking horrible 80s freaking Godzilla movies and whatnot. Um, pretty much uh, Kong is about a giant uh, monkey like gorilla that pretty much can smash about uh, fucking Titanic if he wanted to without even breaking a sweat and yeah he comes from a very strange island of you'd think um, extinct species such as dinosaurs and gigantic bugs and whatnot would be extinct but it turns out there was an island that he was born upon that has all of the extinct species still existing. Now in Kong Skull Island, I'm guessing that's what it's kind of mostly focusing on is the island he comes from, which is the case. But pretty much this is set in the Vietnam times, which I can't remember after about what, ta what time Vietnam was started and when it ended. But basically this movie Kong Skull Island was directed by Jordan Roberts, who helped make the G Godzilla movie um, back, for, back in 2014. Which I thought Godzilla was really fucking badass for a remake, especially. I'm not sure if it was a remake especially, but it was a really badass monster movie. Ro Roberts also made the Pacific Rim movie, which is about all the r giant robots and stuff like that, fighting these things called kaijus and stuff like that. Which is a mixture of like, you know, King Kong species with Godzilla combined and stuff like that. I don't, not really, but that's what I have to see it, how it is. Both of those movies were really awesome. I loved both those movies, uh, freaking Pacific Rim and Godzilla. So when I saw that there was a new Kong movie coming out, I knew for a fact I might like it because of the fact that those two movies were really good in my opinion. Um, well, the thing is, it was the case, exactly. Um, pretty much, I'm not going to sugarcoat it, but the first half of this video is going to be spoiler free and then the next half is going to be spoilers. Um, pretty much it was the director who made Pacific Rim and Godzilla, like I said, named is Jordan Roberts. Um, very good films, very good at writing what he did in the cinematic uh, photography and whatnot and the CGI was really good in those two movies. So I never thought for a second that this CGI was going to be horrible at all because it wasn't. As the movie began, you think it's going to start off in Vietnam like it said it would in the like dialogue and the trailers and whatnot, but it didn't. So it actually started off in World War II um, pretty much playing back with John C. Riley's character, um, who I don't remember the name off the top of my head. He was, uh, fighting the Japanese army, uh, during World War II, like I said, and I believe it was taking place after Pearl Harbor was bo bombed. Um, so he was fighting a, a Japanese, uh, fighter, and they both crash-landed on this unknown island, and they both saw something they never thought possible to see while they were both trying to kill each other because, you know, Japanese, American, but anyways, that's beside the case. Um, as years went by and then we got into the Vietnam time, um, we had uh, characters like, uh, we got people like John Goodman, Samuel Jackson, and Tom Hiddleston, and Brie Larson. A bunch of different actors all in this movie, all thrown in there and stuff like that. I thought it was freaking cool, especially to see John Goodman again. Um, it, it, but the last time I saw him, he was playing the Cloverfield movie as that psychotic dude who was trying to take sanctuary from the apocalypse, thinking that the world was at an end. So I was pretty happy to see that old, that old man come back into the filmmaking again, um, especially with Samuel Jackson. Now, with, with that being said, with all these actors all together, especially John C. Riley, I, they did not disappoint with their acting once again, although there was a little bit of acting flaws I did see. This, some of them just really weren't taking their role as seriously as they should have. But Samuel Jackson definitely took the cake, that's for sure. And I have conferred to people who really didn't make their, you know, acting skills pop out for their character. I can't believe I'm saying this, but it looked like Tom Hiddleston's character really wasn't a big fit into the film. Although they tried to make it as freaking fittable as possible. I think that was the problem. They were trying to make it fit too much into it. And then also the fact that he is a mercenary that used to have a military background was also a big question mark over my head so I couldn't even figure out his character from the start whereas Brie Larson's character is an anti-war photographer who pretty much she would pretty much uh, take pictures of people who wanted peace and were protesting and whatnot and if she got the you know the job to take pictures of actual war she would a she'd be able to but she wouldn't be happy about it because she's against war and pretty much Brie Larson's character is a hippie in a way I guess 
Which is fine. I don't have a problem with hippies. I'm just pointing that out right now. But pretty much her character was just all peaceful and just wanted to take pictures, didn't really care about the war and whatnot. And like I said, this was taking place during freaking Vietnam times where people didn't want Vietnam going down, they didn't want it happening, we wanted to withdraw our troops and stuff like that. Which we did, um, but that's pretty much where this story starts off. Before we start pulling out of Vietnam, uh, John Goodman's character decides to hit, hit up the, the U.S. Senate get in contact with his best with his close friend that works in there to get him some transportation to the military to study this island to see what's on it with his speculation saying that all extinct species is still on that island he wants to get as much research as possible before the window closes when vietnam is finally over now with asking the military to be a part of this that also caused a lot of freaking military vietnam vets to actually have to sacrifice their one ticket home just to go on this little research trip. And what did they end up finding? The actual island surrounded by a hurricane, like it said, pretty much making like a Vuda triangle kind of tale, which is really cool in my opinion. And they go there finding things that they never expected. Giant freaking lizards, giant freaking mooses and buffalo and stuff like that. Fucking spiders. Fuck spiders. And then, of course, the king himself, Kong. Now, with the conflict between Kong and the soldiers from Vietnam. I loved this com combination of the, of the two. I've always wanted to see something like that. Um, it was definitely fantastic and all out. Uh, I thought the props were amazing, like the M16s, the M60s, the M14s, the shotguns. They were freaking amazing. I love that. And the helicopters, oh my goodness, the helicopters were fantastic looking. They looked exactly like the ones that they used in Vietnam. And a little, f and a little fun note, they actually did film this film in actual Vietnam just to make it more believable for the viewer to actually obtain. If you're up to date with how Vietnam went down and you studied it through high school and elementary school and middle school, then you already know how it goes down with how it looks. So when I watched this movie, Vietnam was pretty well done in my, in my, in my opinion. So uh, Jordan, nice job with that. Really good job with doing that. Um, I love the island. The island was fantastic, and the CGI was phenomenal. Very phenomenal. My problems with this film will be going through shortly, more into the spoiler half. I'm not going to say there wasn't any problems, because there was, but the all-out movie was really good, so I, I enjoyed it. I'd, I'd watch it again if I had another person to go with me. I'd only watch it a second time, really. I wouldn't watch it a third time. It'd be only two and done. Like, Logan, I plan on watching three more times, just because it was that good. King Kong doesn't exactly reach that high of limit with Logan, in my opinion. So, with that being said, we had a really good variety, especially John C. Riley's character. Loved it, especially when he dis when he talked about the difference between species is, de is not determined between where they come from or the war that happened between them, but who they are deep down inside, because his character... And the person he was fighting in the Japanese army became friends and then one of them died from the lizard things and pretty much he told them that hey we were the same once we hit this island so I wish the whole world could see that. You'll be gonna fall.